welcome to Brutap Cast. I am Tap here for another Flesh and Blood video. Today we will be going over some pre-con Blitz budget upgrades. So we are going through Chain today. So we have Chain. He is a Shadow Rune Blade. We will be popping along and uh, upgrading, looking at the deck, seeing what it does, and then doing a little bit of a budget upgrade. So we're shooting for under fifty dollars. Uh, just rares, those sorts of things, filling out the deck, making it a little bit more exciting. Uh, that's kind of where we're aiming to do. So uh, without any further ado, let's just jump right on into that. Alrighty, so we have our uh, Blitz deck here. This is the breakdown of the actual pre-con deck. Uh, this is it. So the only thing that's not showing up on Fab Foundry here is uh, the, the Lord Sutcliffe. So the the actual, uh, the, the cool new card, which I can't find right now. There we go. Uh, the, the Lord Sutcliffe is the mentor. Uh, so that's not showing up on here. So this will be uh, one card short of a full deck. It, it shows that it's in the deck, but it will not actually come up on the screen. So we can't actually see it down here in the non-attack action. It isn't really non-attack action. It's just its own thing. So in any case, this is the actual uh, deck here. So... Um, Overall, this is a very safe pre-con. Uh, you know, Chain is all about uh, getting go again and having things in your banner zone with blood debt uh, with those soul shackles. So ultimately, um, the cool thing about Runeblade is it does a good mixture of arcane as well as physical damage. And that's kind of where he shines. And you're able to do that so you can attack your opponent's hero on multiple, multiple axes. And that requires more cards to actually block out damage. Um, he also has a lot of things that are you know, boosted by doing arcane damage that we saw with Viscerai, the, the previous rune blade that we had as well. Um, so for this particular one, it's all about going again. So going a little bit wider, doing the non-attack and then the attack actions, and then getting go again and doing those sorts of things. So generally all your non-attack actions have go again. So you're going to be able to do that, and then you get to do another attack. And then that attack's going to have go again. The downside, and it's not really a downside if you can manage it, is the Soul Shackles will make you banish a card from the top of your library at the beginning of your turn for each Soul Shackle you have. So... You want to go again, you make a Soul Shackle. That's going to each upkeep or each turn start will count for one exiled card. It is a resource pool. Playing cards from your Banished Zone is very good. It, it, it leaves you access to more cards you know, per turn than you would if you didn't have that. This particular build is rather safe as well, as it has quite a few cards that will be able to be played from your Banished Zone uh, for relatively cheap. So... You're, you're, you're not going to get hosed from Blood Debt because a lot of them you can pull out of the Banner Zone so you don't get hit by that. So checking out the deck list below here uh, or in, on the screen here, um, basic breakdown is there are nine zero cost cards. We have 14 one cost cards and 13 two cost cards, three three cost and then one six. That's that legendary rare they have there. Um, pitch, we go to there. We have a zero pitch one. Although the uh, Sorry, pitch zero. Technically, that's the... Uh, that's the that's Lord Sutcliffe. He's just not showing up there. So there's there he is. Uh, we have 22 pitch one, so 22 reds, nine yellow, and then eight blue pitches. Um, moving from there, so we talked about uh, arcane damage. So we have seven cards that actually deal arcane damage, and then four that actually gain. So we have the seeds of agony, which which push arcane damage onto uh, other other cards as well. So you have a a very wide spread of uh, things that are going to do arcane damage. And then you also have eight cards that benefit from having done arcane damage. For instance, we have Rip Through Reality. If you've dealt arcane damage to an opposing hero this turn, it gains go again. That's kind of, that's really key. So that's one of the power cards, although it's expensive at two for only four. Giving it go again is pretty, pretty good. Um, so we do, as we said, we have 12 non-attack actions plus the Mentor, which isn't showing up. We have 27 attack actions from all of the different uh, things that we're pulling from here. Um... So five cards that are uh, are buffed by non-attack actions as well. So we do like to see a mix of those things. Um, so we have five that are directly buffed from that. Um, so we're really leaning into the arcane damage in this particular deck, and we're trying to go wide. Um, so what is good, uh, good about this is that there are, there are only three cards in the deck that have blood debt that are not always accessibly played out of the Banish Zone. Um, meaning they are unconditional they're conditionally able to be played. So if you have played a non-attack action slash done arcane damage, you can play it out of the banish zone. Every other card with blood debt in the deck, you can play for no additional cost. There's no catches or anything. You just go for the gusto. So in that regard it's it's a safe build in that re in, in that reality here. Um so it, it works well. 
and it's it's a fun deck and they're definitely all the all the blitz decks are balanced the way they are built but if you're looking to try to go a little bit extra this is maybe your interest in the game you want to beef it up a little bit you want to jazz it up a little bit so what we did uh, is we made a deck that was an upgraded version so under 50 dollars you get a budget build we're just using the rares so it should be more easily uh you know collected and used um so what did we actually take out of the deck well we took out the spew shadows those were the first ones to go it's just there's only so it says choose an attack action card with cost one or less in your banished zone. If you play this this turn, you can play it this turn. So basically, it's saying something in your banished zone can be played outside of your banished zone, which is great. Uh, but most of the cards that you really want to play are already going to be playable out of your banished zone. And then the cost one, I think there's only what we did. There's only four cards that are targetable, so it doesn't really seem super useful when giving your your next attack. If it's attacking a light hero plus two, isn't really great. Yes, it has the it is a non attack action, so you have that buff. But it's really not worth it for a two cost and two defense. So it's really not that great. So we dropped those out. Um, we also dropped the ghostly visits. So jump up to this guy. So one cost for four damage with just blood debt. Yes, it blocks for three, which is kind of nice. It just it just isn't super powerful and super synergistic on the deck. So we dropped those as well. Uh, so, yeah, we dropped all all those, all the spears, uh, spew shadow. We have consuming volition. Uh, we dropped that as well. It does benefit from arcane damage, but ultimately, you know, it's sort of like. It's awesome if they can discard a card, but most likely they'll just block it out. Um, yes, it can require two cards because it is a four power attack, but then it, theoretically it's maybe a piece of armor in a card or something like that. So it just doesn't do enough, really. And it doesn't synergize enough with the deck because, yes, it gets buffed for our arcane damage, but it's not it's not great, really that great for going ride with the other things we want to do. Um Arcanic Crackle, we also dropped these, mostly because they're, yes, they are two sources of damage, but there's another card, and we only have one copy of it in the deck so far, um, that is a little bit better. We have Vexing Malice, and that's kind of what this one was the, this is great. You put in the blue uh, Vexing Malice, and it, yes, it's, 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 it's a, it actually costs a resource, but it does two Arcane Damage, and that's, I think that's actually a better, that, that's worth an extra point, is yes, you're only attacking for one, but you're also punching it for two Arcane Damage, and that's kind of a critical point, because most people don't have that Arcane Barrier. So the less like you're more likely to be able to block it and and not block the arcane damage. So that's where that's where that sort of swapped out. So a, spoiler, we added a couple blue uh, vexing malice. So we dropped those out. Uh, blue rift binds. So the rift binds are great, um, especially if you can really churn a lot of attack non attack actions, and then it gets plus X, where that's the number of those you played, and then boom, you're coming in for a bunch. But ultimately like let's say you go real crazy and you go three non-attack actions this is attacking it for four that's still not a huge thing it's, it's not really that great um whereas the red one starting at three and then adding three that's great that's multiple cards not just uh, okay cool i'll block with one card and get one damage that's it just doesn't do enough for for all those things that you're adding on and yes the non-attack actions may buff it sure 100 percent, absolutely but ultimately you'd rather do more damage the red is just going to be better and there's better cards that we can have more synergies and maybe more go again and go wide strategies if we drop that. So we drop the two blues. What else do we drop? We dropped Seeping in Shadow. Um, Seeping Shadows. It just, it does give unconditional go again, and that's very powerful. It has a conditional cost of it has to be one or less, to, uh, one or less cost, which is, you know, not super bad for this deck. There's only a couple cards that are actually not going to fit there that you want to hit this with. Um... But three costs is quite a lot, and so that's why we dropped it. I also don't have a lot of experience with this card. There's only one copy. You don't see it a lot. Just really didn't get it a lot. So in that regard, we're trying to keep our costs low because, again, we want to go why we want to play out of our Banished Zone. This is, really isn't syn synchronized with what we want to do there. Uh, Lunar Tide Plunderer. So this is a great card. Um, these are two of the three cards in the deck can actually stop a spectra uh, sorry phantasm so that's really quite nice as you can blow up a phantasm with this so that's that's a powerful reason to have it in the card um they aren't really great we should probably they should probably stay in we kind of want to take them out because they are very expensive um like banishing cards from your soul what if you're not playing a a light or a shadow hero it's not like oh my god this is super great well actually it's really just light that matters um so that's why it's super not great but we're leaving it in purely because Otherwise, we have no cards that are going to help us with Prism uh, and those uh, Phantasms. So I guess the the, the, the non-budget version would just be 
Command and Conquer. Just replace it with Command and Conquer. It's essential. It's it's generally better. Um, it's going to do more. It's going to be cheaper. And yeah, maybe the the stealing something out of a soul is great, but Command and Conquer is probably just a better card. Um, all right. So notable cards we, that we didn't drop. Well, Warmonger's Recital. So these don't look great. Like generics are generally not the best uh, for like unless they're like a Chase Mythics or, or sorry um, um, Majestics or anything like that. They're generally not that great. This is actually really good for chain because you're allowed to put th if if the thing hits in plus three and plus two ain't too shabby. So if you have a big attack, you're slapping on two or three extra damage. If it hits, you get to put it on the bottom of your deck. So that's all well and fun. But like, what if you banish a card, play it and it's buffed with this, then you basically are recycling. So it's not going to the graveyard. It's going to the bottom of your deck. So you're playing from the banish on and adding back to your deck so you can feed yourself more for later. So that's why these are staying in purely because it seems like a really great thing to have a way to regur regurgitate, uh, to recycle uh, things from your Banish Zone, not only just right into your graveyard, but actually on the bottom of your library. So we kept those in. All right, so that is 11 cards that we ended up dropping. Uh, well, what did we put in? So we wanted to put in things that were going to do the thing we wanted to do, which is go again. We wanted to go again. That's going wide, all that kind of stuff. So we'll pop over to here. This is our other, this is the deck we made. This is the upgraded version. Uh, we also added out equipment, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, all right, so starting at the beginning, we talked about Vexing Malice already. So we put in two blue Vexing Malice. So this is the one that, yes, it costs one, still pitches for three, uh, deals two arcane damage, as well as just coming in for one. So in that regard, very powerful. Um, you're paying an extra resource for a second piece of arcane damage, which is which is very powerful. That can change your opponent's loadout. That can almost ensure that if... Your normal opponent says, oh, well, it's Runeblade. All I need is Arcane Barrier 1. This makes that a little bit harder. So in that regard, this is more of a way to guarantee that you're going to have Arcane Damage for things that want it. So if we, we put two of those in there. Unhallowed Rites Red. So the Unhallowed Rites, we did have a single one in the initial deck. We added a second one. So this was Raven's preview card. So if you haven't checked him out, and that, that was a great video he did. Uh, for that but this is his preview card so this is a one cost four power three defense uh if you played a non-attack action you may um, play this from your banish zone. this is one of the few cards that you actually have to play non-attack action to play it out of your banish zone we added another one because it's pretty powerful because it has that warmonger's recital so you may put a non-attack action card with blood debt from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck so it doesn't even have to hit that's just part of the the normal process of playing the card so in that regard it's good you can get things that you really want out from the bottom of your deck Robert's your mother's brother there. Um, so then we go on to our next one. We have Bounding Demigon. So we have the red ones. We also uh, put in the, the yellow. I don't know why it's down there. That's weird. We put in two copies of the yellow one. So why is this good? Well, if you play a non-attack action card the turn, and you play it from your Banner Stone, and it gets plus one. So it's a, it's a free one. That's why it's kind of cool. Yes, that only puts us into the three... You know, that's not above, you know, you really want to be attacking for four because that's the break point where most cards don't defend for four or more. So it's going to require two cards or a piece of armor. But there's other ways. So you're playing a non-attack action card to play this out of your banner zone. Most of your non-attack action cards are going to buff your thing. So this is going to be more than four, more than three, I should say. So in that regard, it's good. It's also free. That's kind of the big thing we want to do. We want to give go again and have be very cheap because then we just play cards from everywhere. So many cards all the time. These big, long, wide turns. Um... So that was there. It gets up to three physical and then, you know, adding on extra stuff. Now we wanted to add more go again. Here's here's where the we're, we're sort of turning a train away from monarch cards and we're going more towards new things. And maybe Morovian Skies. So these are those are going to be the non budget budget cards um, because I think the I think the blue ones are like nine bucks and the, and, the, and the yellow ones are like four or five bucks. So in that regard, these are the these are the, the chase rares in the deck. So what does it do? Well, says the next rune so it costs zero for this particular one blocks for two next rune blade attack action card you play this turn gains go again and if it hits create a rune chance so and then it has go again we don't really care too much about getting the rune chance although it's great because it turns on things that care about arcane damage but ultimately it's that go again this is unconditional go again and that's super 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 neat super needed as well um this will help you go wider in those turns and it's free yes you take the hit of it only blocks for two which isn't great but it's going to churn and help go wide. The the other one does the same thing, except we create two rune chance. So again, very powerful way to give go again and do the things that you want to do. That way you can play something, 
to give something go again, this gives it go again, then you can get a, a soul shackle out and have go again. So you can do a whole bunch of things in a single turn. So very powerful there. Um, what else do we have? I think our last one we had here was our meet and greet. So we did put in a meet and greet, a red meet and greet. Which is not, there it is, down at the bottom. So we have meet and greet. So this is a one cost. Uh, this is the red pitch version. Attacks for four, blocks for three. It says if it hits, create a rune chant. Which is, not, again, not necessarily why we're doing it. But the bottom says if you've dealt or deal arcane damage to an opposing hero this turn, meet and greet gains go again. Love it. So this is another way for a good defense value as well to give your attacks go again. And it's cheap. So again, if a lot of the things we're playing on a Banner Stone are going to be free, we have this, which can be played on the Banner Stones. And we did lose a little bit of that versatility of the Soul Shackles taking cards that we don't really want in our Banner Stone and putting them there. That's just part of the roll of the dice that we play when you do these Banish things. But if you have it in your hand, this is another way to give go again, go wider in those attacks. So it's pretty powerful, and I think it'll really work with the deck. And again, I think... Compared to the stock deck, this is going to be a little bit less, you know, every turn making a soul shackle. Maybe you're going to take a turn off once and then because you don't want to just eliminate your entire deck because you have these new additions that we don't really want to lose. They're giving us go again without having to have a soul shackle. So you're going to be pumping the brakes a little bit on making those soul shackles, which will slow the pace of the ability to get our other resources, but you'll also have more turns to do so. So that's where that sort of comes in. All righty, so those were the new additions as far as actual cards to make this deck a little bit more exciting. We filled in the rest of the equipment because they didn't really have anything else in there. So we had the iron, uh, the Aether Iron Weave, the Ebon Fold, the Snapdragon Scalers, and the Spellfray Gloves. We added the Crown of Dichotomy, which is a great way to have Arcane Barrier, as well as a full set of Null Rune outside of that. This is just allowing you to uh, get things back from your graveyard on your library. So theoretically, you could use like Warmonger's Recital to... Uh, uh, play a card from your Banish Zone, it goes back at the bottom of your library, or it goes to the graveyard and you can get it back with uh, the Crown Dichotomy. So in that regard, this is another way to recycle things and, and play a little bit longer, play those big hits again, that sort of thing. Uh, as we said, full set of Null Rune, just because you never know what you're going to run up against. And then this is sort of Iron Hide versus Iron Rock, kind of depending upon your meta, and that's something that you should just, just figure out as you're playing your decks uh, with the people that you play with. If you have the ability to spend these resources and people are going to be really smashing for a large amount of damage, then this is actually pretty good and it's probably worth it. Or you play the Iron Rot, which is just an unconditional, always blocks for one. You get a bonus here for actually having to pay. Not a lot of stuff to do with your resources at instant speed in this deck. So in that regard, you're probably going to, unless you're pitching a red, you're going to lose a little bit of value there. And it is a card out of your hand rather than just a card, uh, uh, a piece of armor. All right, so all in all, uh, with all those upgrades, so those were... All under $50. And I know that sounds a lot. Like, literally all the non-Morovian Sky cards were $7. And the Morovian Sky cards were $25 or so. So ultimately, this is like $30, $35 with shipping, I guess, if you're going to be buying these singles uh, from a store online or something like that. And that's not that bad. So I think if you if you manage to pick the deck itself up for $12, $15, this is going to be under $50 from the start. So you're going to pick up the deck. You get some extra cards. Boom, you're off to the races with a... A, a, a budget, somewhat fun and exciting deck to play, uh, and you tweak a little bit from this, so people might think, oh, he's just playing the precon. Well, boom, you got some extra pizzazz in there to uh, to to jazz it up. So that'll be that'll be good. So again, notable notable caveat. Um, depending on your local meta, some of these cards probably won't be that great, particularly on the the armor. You might want to mess around with what you're going to do there. But uh, another thing you can also change is the weapon. The Galaxy of Black, because we're playing a lot of things out of a Banish Stone, is very important, and we like to have that. So we kept that in there. But you could go with a Nebula Blade. You could go with a Reaping Blade. Uh, it's probably probably Galaxy Black or Reaping Blade would be a little bit better just because we are playing a lot of stuff from our Banish Stone. So in that regard, that's where we kind of want to be. But uh, And that'll be that'll be it. So that's, that's ultimately the deck. Uh, it's a little bit more exciting than uh, the base one because it, it brings in a little bit from what we had back in Arcane Rising and uh, it makes it a little bit more exciting. So that's our take on this. So we're going to be doing these budget uh, upgrades for the other uh, other three pre-con decks. So not sure who's going to be next, but we have the other three. So we'll, we'll be doing those very shortly. Also hoping to get some uh, fun content creator uh, battling action uh, up on, on the YouTube as well. Going to be playing with some other creators to uh, do these, probably just the stock versions to see how they play uh, against other stock versions and, and you know, get, get people excited about these. And then there's always the upgrades that you want to do. So maybe this was a little bit out of order, but this is the video that we have uh, today. So all that said, uh, we'd like to say thank you for Brewtap Cast. This is Tap saying thank you, good night, and cheers.